Hello and a very warm welcome to another interesting session from Economicspedia. I hope you all are doing great. So, today's topic of discussion is about equilibrium. Now, in economics, when we think about equilibrium, the one thing that strikes right off our mind is where the demand and supply are intersecting, right? So, this is a very common and a very simple concept where this is, if this is my demand curve, if it is downward sloping and if my supply curve is upward sloping, the one point that where they are meeting, this is my equilibrium output and corresponding to this, this is my equilibrium price. Considering this is where the price and quantity are being measured. So this point E, let's say this point E is our equilibrium, right? It's a very simple concept that we know about equilibrium. But this is a session that Economicspedia is discussing. So there has to be something extra that has to be kept in mind. Alright, so on that note, today's discussion and topic of discussion is absolutely, absolutely regarding the equilibrium. But today we are going to discuss this equilibrium concept from the walrus and the Marshallian adjustment procedure. Now, this Marshallian and Walrusian adjustment procedure in explaining the equilibrium is a very important part in economics itself. All right, so let's get our concepts, you know, brushed up and get it brand new with Economicspedia and in this session. So if you like this session, make sure you hit the like button. And if you are new to our channel, make sure you subscribe to our channel and also press the bell icon so that you never miss any update from the platform of Economicspedia. And given below in the description box, the links are given. Do check them out and keep following Economicspedia. Alrighty. So the basic concept of uh, equilibrium is related to this stable form of equilibrium and the distable or destabilized form of equilibrium. Now, if I consider this diagram only, I'm erasing this part so that we can get a very clear view. However, I'm marking this as PE and QE, which is our equilibrium price and quantity, right? Now, over here, if I have a price, let's say P1, under this situation, if I draw a dotted line like this, so this is a case where our demand is more, that means our, there is a presence of excess demand. Under this excess demand presence, what will happen? The equilibrium will try to adjust towards this point E, that means the price will tend to go up under this case. And let's say if we have a price P2, Again, if I draw a dotted line over here, then now this is the case where the demand is less, right? So the excess demand is basically lesser or it's negative because the supply is more. Under this case, what will happen? The price will fall down and again it will come back to the equilibrium position of E. Now this is a case which is called as a stable equilibrium. Now let's talk about the situation when the equilibrium is not stable. Again with the help of a diagram I am going to explain so that it is easier for you to understand and of course retain. So here of course I am Q and P the axis are measuring these things. Let's say this is my demand curve. Now it's like that. And let's say this is my supply curve. So the, this is the supply curve and this is the demand curve. I hope the diagram is a bit clear. Alright, let's 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 erase this and let me write it here. So this is the stable equilibrium situation now coming to this part here. So according to the equilibrium definition where the two curves are meeting, that is the point of equilibrium. So this is our point E and corresponding to this point we have QE and let's say mark it as PE that is the equilibrium price and quantity. Alrighty. Now here, look at this part, right? This part of the diagram. What can you say from here? This is my demand curve and this is my supply curve. So obviously the demand is more than the supply. So here 
this is a case where my excess demand is positive or demand is more under the case of excess demand when it is positive i have just told you that the price will tend to go up because the demand is more so what is happening here the price will go up the price will go up that means obviously the equilibrium is not coming to point e market now let's say if my price is somewhere here so i'm taking the upper price as in this case p1 and this is my p2 all right so here we found that p1 will go up under the case of p2 what can you say the supply is more right so here the excess demand is negative and under the case where the demand is less than the supply what will happen to the price the price tends to reduce go down that's going to happen here so the price p2 will go down that means what we can say if this is my equilibrium position then from here the prices and as well as the quantity will deviate out that means it will not come back to point e the equilibrium point now this is the case of the stabilized equilibrium it's the case of stable and unstable now one thing you have to keep in mind when we talk about the stabilized equilibrium and the destabilized equilibrium so the case when the equilibrium will be stable is when the demand curve cuts the supply curve from below like for example in this case the upper region look at this the demand is cutting the supply curve from above and that is why in on the upper part of this of this diagram we can find that the equilibrium is not coming uh, to point e it's rather deviating out so this is the case when we cannot say that the equilibrium is going to happen therefore the demand curve has to cut from the below all right this is one very important part that you have to keep in mind now this is a session where are where we going to discuss the walrusian as well as the marshallian adjustments equilibrium so let's move to the second part of today's session so walrusian and marshallian adjustments let's start with walrus walrusian adjustment now when we talk about adjustment any disturbance in the economy any factor that leads to a disturbance in the whole economy that leads to some adjustments right any disturbance leads to adjustments now these adjustments why this is taking place so that a new equilibrium can be reached to get a new equilibrium situation that's why the adjustments are taking place now whenever we talk about walrusian adjustments make sure the adjustments are taking place in terms of prices that's right so here it is taking price under consideration for any equilibrium to reach the new equilibrium all right otherwise we cannot say that the adjustments is taking place so how the prices are going to take place take the role in case of adjustments let's learn about that now under this situation under my walrus walrusian price adjustment let's say the current price if this is less than my equilibrium price then current price is less than the equilibrium price then what will happen here the price will adjust and the price will go up similarly the other situation if the current price is here greater than my equilibrium situation then this is the case where my price will go down in other words how i can represent it 
in another uh, form. So, I'm writing it over here. If my excess demand is positive, excess demand is positive, then I can say that the price will go up. This means what? This excess demand is positive means what? QD is greater than QS. The demand is greater than the supply. So what will happen? Obviously the price will go up. Right? In the same way, the other situation that we can say from here is that if my excess demand is negative, in other words we can say that QD is less than QS. That means the quantity demand is, is lesser than the quantity is actually getting supplied. Then here the price will adjust and it will go down. Absolutely direct. Okay. So this is coming directly from the first part that I have discussed in this session. So from there only you can get this concept size. So however the important thing that you have to remember is that Walrushian price ad uh, adjustment for the equilibrium is taking place on the basis of the prices. Alright. Okay. So that's about the Walrusian adjustment. Now let's quickly move over to the Mar Marshallian adjustments. Now, the two are very like complementary to each other, right? Uh, so Marshallian was, uh, Walrusian was about the price. And guess what? Marshallian is about the quantity adjustment. That's right. So here the word is quantity that is getting adjusted in order to reach to a new equilibrium if any disturbances is there. That is it. That's the basic difference that you can find in the walrus from the Marshallian. Okay. Now the similar arguments that I have used for the uh, Walrusian equilibrium, you just replace it with the uh, Marshallian adjustment in terms of quantity. Then only it becomes the Marshallian adjustments for the equilibrium. So in other words, what we can say is that Walrus thought that if there is any disturbances, the adjustment will take always in terms of the prices. However, Marshallian thought that no, if there is any disturbances, first the buyers as well as the sellers, they will take care of the quantity. They will adjust their quantity first and as an effect of change in quantity, the price change will be followed. Alright, so the price change is happening in of course the Marshall in equilibrium but via quantity adjustment. This is the basic and the important differentiation between the Walrus and the Marshallian adjustment for the equilibrium. Now, let me take two particular situations where we can find the equilibrium is taking place in terms of both the Marshallian as well as Walrusian adjustment and in the other case that I'm going to take at the end is regarding a situation where the equilibrium is taking place in case of Walrus but not in case of Marshallian. So stick till the end to get to an interesting case. Alright, so first let me take up this very simple, very simple situation. Let's say here we are measuring the quantity and over here we are measuring the price. And this is my demand curve. This is my supply curve. This is a classic case. And this is my equilibrium quantity price. Great. Now over here let's say I have a quantity Q1. And let us say we have a quantity Q2 like this. Okay. Now at point Q1, let's talk about quantity Q1. What is happening? At quantity Q1, in one way we can say that there is excess demand and the excess demand is positive. So here the excess demand is positive. Therefore, the price level, price is Q1 H, right? This is the demand price. Let's be very particular, this is the demand price. 
So what is the supply price? Q one G. Right. The supply price that is getting supplied at is lesser than the price that is actually getting demanded at. So therefore, what the producer will do? They will find it profitable to simply increase their quantity production to the equilibrium quantity. And therefore, the output will increase from Q1 to QE. Alright? And that's how the equilibrium point will be reached. Let me mark the equilibrium point as E. So from Q1, the output will go increase to the right hand side to QE. And of course, the price will adjust followed by the change in the quantity and therefore the price will be equated to the equilibrium price. Now, this is the mechanism that I did from the Marshallian point of view. First, the quantity will be adjusted and then followed by the quantity adjusted, the prices will adjust. Okay, so this is the quantity adjustment that I did and the initial case situation that I already discussed that started the session the similar case in terms of Walrus price adjustment. Okay, now let's move to the final, final part of today's discussion and a very interesting discussion where we have a situation in which the equilibrium is holding uh, in case of with using the concepts of Walrus's adjustment but not via Marshallian concepts of equilibrium adjustments. Let's take a look at that. So over here we have the axis and again taking up this similar case, a very important and an interesting case. This is the diagram is familiar to you, right? I have discussed it in this session also. So this is particularly the case where we find here it is a case of excess demand positive and excess demand negative. Um, now according to uh, Walrusian price adjustment, we will be able to find the equilibrium under this case. But in case of Marshallian adjustment, we won't be able to give any answer. Now, if you want to know how the process is actually happening, do let us know and the details are appearing on your screen, the media that you can uh, reach to us. You can also comment below and let us know that you are seeking for this equilibrium adjustment and we would be more than happy to help you and assist you. Alrighty, so this is the case where the two adjustment process gives us two very different results. The situation where the demand and the supply are both downward sloping because that is the case where we found this interesting result. Now, a very quickly mathematical expect, uh, expression in case of walrus now in case of walrusian adjustment the equilibrium will take place and we can find the equilibrium for that we have to differentiate with respect to we have to differentiate the price equation with respect to time and here we will be getting the uh, qd and qs if this is the case then excess demand is positive and I have already told you that if excess demand is positive then what will happen the price will go up and again similarly very quickly if excess demand is negative then the price will go down. This is a Walrusian case. Now let me take you to the Marshallian case. Here the equilibrium dq by dt right the quantity adjustment will take place. Now I am taking a help of a constant and here I am representing my demand equation like this which is a function of quantity again a function of quantity and from here we have excess demand which is a function of quantity and this thing if it is positive then also we can infer so, the, ultimately for inflation, we have to get to this excess demand equation in both the cases. Whether it is um, Marshallian or Walrusian. 
Now over here since k is a constant, alright, k is a positive constant. Now for Marshallian that if my k is positive then we can say that the excess demand is positive and therefore here what will happen the quantity will go up. In the same way if my the constant is negative then the nothing but the demand price is less than the supply price and therefore the quantity will fall. So this is the adjustment that has been taking place here in terms of price and here in terms of quantity. Alright, so that is it from the today's session on equilibrium which is a very interesting and a very uh, important topic. I hope you have learned and this session was helpful to you. You know what to do? Hit the like button and if you are new, subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you in our next session. Thank you very much and take care.